Hi, I'm attorney Bill Bronchick, and in this lesson, which is three parts, we're going to talk about all kinds of partnership arrangements, joint ventures, limited partnerships, general partnerships, syndications, and so forth. So grab a pen and paper, make sure you take some good notes, because this is really going to come at you hard and fast. All right, so the first thing, um, what is a partnership? How do we define a partnership? Well, some people would define a partnership as the guy with the money goes to the guy with the experience, and after the partnership is over, the guy with the experience has the money, and the guy with the money has experience. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to help you avoid. But technically, legally, a partnership is when two or more people get together for the purpose of sharing profits and losses. That is, by definition, what a partnership is. Now, there's all different types of partnerships, um, which we'll get into in a minute, but um, why a partnership? Why would you do a partnership? Well, you might um, not have time. You might have resources, but no time, and find someone who has the time, or you don't have access to deals, someone else has a deal, or you have a deal, but you need money, someone else has money, or you have a deal, and or access to deal, and someone else has uh, a, um, a crew who could fix up property. So there's, there's a lot of good fits for partnerships and why you would use a partnership for a deal. You can also spread out the risk if it's a big project instead of going the whole thing yourself. You can go in what we call a syndication and, um, and bring other people in to the partnership as well. It also allows you to do more deals, and that's really the bottom line here. We want to do more and more deals, and by leveraging the efforts and resources and credit of other people, you're able to do more and more deals in a partnership fashion. So um, there's, there's an active role in a partnership versus a passive role in a partnership, and that's what you have to decide right up front what is going to be your role and what's going to be your partner or partner's roles in the partnership. Now, there are different types of partnerships. The definition I gave you earlier of a, a partnership being two or more people who go into business together with the expectation of sharing profits and losses, that's under the Uniform Partnership Act, which is adopted in some form or fashion in every state. So there are rules, even if you have no agreement. You can create a partnership you know, in a written agreement, which you probably should, uh, you can do it by a handshake and a verbal understanding. Um, you can even do what we call the accidental partnership, and this one's tough. Because in partnerships, and specifically what we refer to as general partnerships, that's where you and, and someone else, or uh, two or more someone else's whatever, go into business together um, agreeing to share profits and losses, and losses. So that means you are responsible as a partner for losses or lawsuits or mistakes that all your partners make. In a general partnership, the liability is joint, I mean everybody's liable, and it's what's called several, several, joint and several liability. So what that means, joint is everybody's responsible. Several means every single partner is liable for the whole. So if you only put up 10% and your other partner put up 90% and that was his or her last dime and they screwed up, they could come after all the liabilities of you as a 10% partner, not just for 10% of the liability. You can get all the liability on you. That's why general partnerships are pretty, uh, a pretty bad way to go, and we'll explain in a moment how you should do a general partnership. Then we have a limited purpose partnership, which is referred to as a, a joint venture, or JV. And same rules of partnership, meaning you're, you're in to share profits and losses, you're guided under the rules of the Uniform Partnership Act, you're liable for what they do, et cetera, et cetera, but it's a limited purpose, it's a limited scope. So you're not in business generally, you're just in business for a specific time or a specific project or a specific deal. So for example, uh, A and B, go in together, one puts up the property, one puts up money, they buy a property, fix it, um, put it on the market to sell, split profits, deal's over. They, split the, uh, they divide up the money. That was a joint venture, and they're not in business regularly. But accidentally, you can end up in a general partnership. 
So for example, let's say A and B did that once, did that twice, did that three times, and B uh, is the one with the, uh, is let's say the silent partner, the one with the money, and A is the active partner, the one doing all the rehabbing and find the deals and so forth. And let's say that, uh, you know, I run into A at Home Depot and I say, Oh, hey, A, how's it going? He goes, oh, it's working out great. I, I, I'm rehabbing these properties with my partner, B, and, it, you know, he's funding the money and I'm doing the properties. I said, oh, that's interesting. What impression have I been left with here by A? I've been left with the impression that they are partners, general partners, not just one deal at a time partners, joint venture partners. So if I lent money to the partnership thinking I'm lending to A and B, and it turns out that they're not in business together, B might be liable under what we call the accidental partnership, which means basically a court is going to say that's a general partnership, it's not a series of joint ventures. Okay? Um, and then we have what's called syndication partnerships, which is a much bigger thing, where we have uh, multiple partners, you know, maybe 20, 30 or more, each putting up money in a passive sense, and you or you and one other, or you and a few other people uh, are the syndicators, the one running the show. And we'll get to that uh, in section three uh, of this lesson. Okay, so let's first talk about the joint venture. The joint venture, I said, is a limited purpose partnership. It is governed by the Uniform Partnership Act of your state. So if you don't want the default rules to come into play, then what you probably should do is put together uh, a joint venture agreement. So it'll spell out things like um, uh, you do this, I do that, you put up this, I put up that, if we have a disagreement, what's the vote, and so on and so forth. Who gets to make decisions about this, who gets to make decisions about that. Uh, and then usually it's a good idea to have in one of those types of agreements is what we call a triggering event and then a rule that follows. So a triggering event could be something like somebody dies, gets divorced, files bankruptcy, uh, becomes incapacitated, um, whatever. Just a triggering event, you know, like a serious triggering event. And on one of those triggering events, you could have a buyout rule. So if, if, if A decides to file bankruptcy, B has the right to buy out A at a predetermined price or a predetermined formula. Or if B decides to die, well, he didn't decide to die, but he dies, and A can buy automatically buy out uh, the other half from the estate at a certain price. So those are types of, uh, and then of course, then, then there's what we call the what if clauses. Um, that's usually 80% of, of a legal agreement. It's not what goes right, but what goes wrong. So if you don't do this, then this happens. If you're required to put up money and you don't, then you get a penalty. Or if you're required to manage the property and you don't, manage the rehab and you don't, uh, then there's a penalty against you and so on and so forth. So if you're going to do a joint venture, by the way, um, liability A and B are liable for each other jointly and severally, even though they're not in business generally. But with regard to that project, they are jointly and severally liable. It would be a good idea to be an entity like an LLC or a corporation doing a joint venture with the other joint venture partners, corporation or LLC. Now, a joint venture could be three parties, could be four parties. Typically, it's two parties, but it can be more than two. It has to be at least two to be a joint venture. It's a sole venture, a sole is just one person. So it's a good idea to have that stuff. It's clearly defined as you can in writing so that you understand if you don't know how to draw one of those up, at least make an attempt or go to an attorney and have one drawn up. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of, or more than a pound, probably a ton of regret later on when things go bad as they normally do in joint ventures. Okay, so now we're going to move on to section two, which is the general partnership. Now, a general partnership is a more permanent relationship and a more ongoing relationship than a joint venture. Where a joint venture is for a particular deal, uh, a general partnership is ongoing business. Now again, joint and several liability for general partners, so you should general partner with between your entity and her entity or his entity or you can form something like a limited liability company 
where you are a member and they are a member. Now, member is just fancy word in this scenario for partner. Instead of having a partnership agreement, you would have what's called an operating agreement within the LLC, which spells out all the same types of things. Now, if you're going to be in business with someone permanently, you have to consider a few issues. Number one, are there alternative scenarios that might work better? For example, would it be better to just borrow the money rather than bring in a money partner all the time? Um, personality differences, style differences, communication differences. Um, the, do you have the time or do they have the time? Uh, do you want to get into arguments later about who's supposed to be doing what? Uh, do you trust them? Do they trust you? What's the risk of something, some triggering event happening uh, in their lives? So all things to consider when going into business with someone. Uh, usually uh, the preferred entity for a general partnership is a limited liability company or LLC. It has members. Now, a, a, uh, an LLC could be set up with uh, managers or, me or member managed. So an LLC, limited liability company, let's say it has two members, A and B. Now, by default, if you set it up like this, which is called member managed, it's very much like a general partnership in that Either A or B as a member, and even if that's an entity A and entity B, would have authority to transact business on behalf of the LLC. So if it's member managed, all members have that authority. If you don't want that, let's say B is a, more of a silent partner, or you just don't want B involved in the management of the activity, you could set A up as a manager, or in some cases it's called a managing member six of one half dozen of the other. The reason is, is because a manager doesn't have to be a member, in which case they'd be a third party manager, but if a member is also a manager, we call them managing member, and in this case B would be a non-managing member. Now in this scenario, only A has authority on behalf of the company to sign things, contracts, uh, leases, um, contractor agreements, checks, things like that. B has no authority. And if you look the LLC up with the Secretary of State, typically it's listed in that document, whether it's manager managed or whether it's member managed and who the manager is. So if you're dealing with someone else, you want to make sure that person has that authority. Okay. Um, the operating agreement, again, is like a partnership agreement, um, laying out who does what. So who's the, it'll lay out who's the manager, who's the member, what the authority of the manager is. What can the manager do without all the, all of the members' permission? Assuming in this case only two, but it could be three. Uh, and what what is the vote? Is it majority? Is it two thirds majority? Uh, especially if you're not 50-50 owners, 50-50 members. So all those things would be spelled out in an operating agreement. Um, also tax selections. So a joint venture, general partnership, limited liability company partnership are all partnerships in the sense that they file a 1065 tax return with the IRS. It's called a partnership return. Okay, So an LLC as a partnership, a general partnership, a joint venture, all can be partnerships for the filing purposes. Um, you're going to have a lot more triggering events too to deal with in your operating agreement just like you would have in a joint venture or general partnership agreement. And um, what a lot of people do, if it's a, if it's a big venture, so th this company's got lots of properties or lots of assets, is uh, typically what the members will do is have life insurance on each other. So if one dies, that's the buyout. Um, so the, the, you, you get the insurance proceeds as the buyout. Okay. Um, and then, you, depending on how many uh, deals you're doing, especially in real estate, if you have m multiple rental properties, for example, you might want to have more than one LLC. So you can do multiple LLCs with A and B as member, or you can have one master LLC with A and B as member, and then several sub LLCs, which are wholly owned subsidiaries of the master company. So this is what we call the parent company, and the sub LLC is what we call the subsidiary, sort of like GM and Chrysler. No, no, it's GM. That, that's not a big example. It was GM, Chevrolet, uh, GMC. Those are all the subsidiaries of GM. Okay. 
And then um, once you've got your, uh, your structure in place and you've got your rules in place, you should review them often and review your operating agreement to make sure that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing, especially if you're the silent partner. It's a good idea to audit books, audit practices to make sure that the managing partner is doing what they're supposed to be doing. All right, in this discussion, we're going to go over the syndication which is a much bigger project as a partnership than simply a joint venture or general partnership or LLC with two partners or two members. Um, when you're dealing in syndication, typically what happens is you'll form an LLC or a limited partnership where you're either, if it's an LLC, you'd be the managing member. If it's a limited partnership, you'd be the general partner. Uh, and then the limited partners or the non-managing members in the case of an LLC would be passive investors. No control, no say-so except for maybe some minor voting uh, of X, Y, and Z rules, but for the most part it's geared towards control and decision-making in favor of the syndicator. Now, if this would be pretty common in a commercial project where millions of dollars are needed for a down payment, so you have a $15 million project, you need a $6 million down payment, uh, and you can't raise that on your own, so you sell membership interests, non-managing membership interests, to other investors who will become your partners in the LLC, or limited partnership. Um, the challenge with this, a lot of people don't realize, is this falls within securities regulations. What does that mean? Securities as in stock market securities? Yes, yes. Stock, you know, Google stock, that's a security. A bond is a security in instrument. Um, but also, by definition, any investment in which the person putting up the money expecting a profit is not going to be managing the investment or procuring the profits. Okay? So that's pretty broad. That's a very broad definition. Clearly, if you're going to have an LLC. Uh, and then have five passive partners putting up money and you're the managing member, that those interests you're selling in the LLC would be considered securities. Now, what does that mean? Well, all kinds of paperwork, rules, regulations, federal, state. There are many exemptions where you can get away with not having to deal in the securities realm. You have what's called an exemption. Now, just from the front, if you bring in, it, it could be one partner or 20 partners, it's still a security. If you only have one or two partners, the easiest way to get out of it being a security is to, get, is to make them involved. Because by definition, a security is a passive investment, whereas a partnership is everybody's a manager, everybody makes decisions. You could be the, you know, the head honcho manager, uh, but you can also put together maybe a board of directors or a board of managers with the other investors so that they're involved and you have meetings. That would take it out of securities regulations entirely. But if you're within the securities realm, then there are exemptions. Uh, first, you understand there are, you have to find a federal exemption and then a state exemption in the states you're dealing, with, dealing in. So let's say you're dealing in New Jersey. You form the LLC in New Jersey to buy a property in New Jersey. And all the investors you're soliciting are in New Jersey. Well, the SEC rules wouldn't even apply because it's wholly intra, intra within a state. So you have to deal, find an exemption under the New Jersey rules. But as soon as you step across state lines and solicit someone in, let's say, Pennsylvania, then you have to deal with SEC regulations and deal with an exemption there. I'm not going to go into the nitty-gritty and the technical things of securities regulations, but just a couple of things you have to keep in mind. In most cases, in most cases, you cannot publicly solicit investors. That means email blasts, Radio, TV, standing in front of a group of uh, you know 20 people at a business meeting, those are all public offerings. You can't do public solicitation unless, unless all of the people that you're soliciting and eventually um, become members of your company are what we call accredited investors. Um, I'm not going to get into the definition of it, but let's suffice it to say that's a rich, rich sophisticated person. <laughs> so not someone who's got 40 grand. 
Okay, so um, if you're going to sell small interests like 30, 40 grand at a clip, um, you're definitely dealing with uh, 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 securities and you're definitely dealing in the realm of most likely non accredited investors, so you can't do bulk soliciting. You have to go within your realm of friends and family and business associates. Um, you have to have an operating agreement for the LLC, and this one's going to be much different. Uh, then say this one between A and B is going to be favor you much more. It's going to make it very difficult for them to fire you as a manager and so forth. Uh, but you have a very high fiduciary responsibility to your investors and you want to make sure you disclose all of the risks up front in writing and we call that writing a private placement memorandum or PPM or offering memorandum. And that's something an attorney does that is anywhere between 50 and 200 pages of disclosures, disclaimers, and uh, all kinds of you know legal jargon so people don't come back later when the deal goes bad and say, he didn't tell me that could happen or she didn't tell me that could happen. And if they're right, then you can get sued for securities fraud. And that sounds really bad, but it just means you didn't, you didn't disclose something that was material to the risks of the investment. So, to sum it up, we've got the joint venture, one-shot deals. We have the general partnership, which could be done under an LLC, uh, or just two people, two entities, well, under a general partnership agreement. Then we have the syndication, which is usually done under a manager-managed limited liability company. The bottom line is, no, no matter which one you go, make sure you've got something really good in writing between the parties. It just it makes it so much easier when everyone understands what their rights, their roles, and their responsibilities are up front. So there's no, oh, I thought you meant, and I thought you said, and didn't you say this, and digging through emails, put it in writing. This is Bill Bronchick. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion of partnerships, joint ventures, and syndications.